Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Today we honor Saint Monica, one of the most popular and loved saints, and rightfully so. Now, Saint Monica is known in conjunction with her son, Saint Augustine, whom we will honor tomorrow. Tomorrow's the memorial of Saint Augustine. The church finds it fitting to honor the mother first and then the son. You know, because without the mother, in this case, there wouldn't be the son who would be Saint Augustine. Monica was uh, originally of a Christian family, Christian parents, and she was, uh, for some reason, given in marriage to a pagan by the name of Patrizio or Patrick. And they had children together, one of whom was Augustine, the famous convert to the faith. Monica was faithful to her vocation you know, as a mother and also as a wife. She would also bring her husband to the faith and her mother-in-law as well, and perhaps many others we don't know of. But she had been faithful to her vocation, especially as a mother, by not merely giving birth to her children, but striving to give them a proper upbringing and to give birth to them anew, a second time, as it were, spiritually, that spiritual rebirth you know, in the grace of God. She had prayed and sacrificed for many years, decades, perhaps close to 30 years or so, all for the sake of the conversion of her children, particularly Augustine, who was uh, a bit uh, wayward for much of his uh, his youth and young adulthood. We learn many things from St. Monica, and one of the most important things, however, is, is that fidelity to her vocation as a mother. You know, she had given herself entirely to her children and did everything she could to make sure that they received God's grace and mercy, the grace of being a Christian, a member of the church, and receiving the grace ultimately of salvation, eternal life. And that's the most important thing a mother should uh, strive to obtain for their, her children. So a true mother to the very end. And she, in regard to Augustine, had watched over him and, and actually followed him you know, when he left their home in Northern Africa to go to Italy you know, for further studies and to teach. You know, she physically pursued him, followed him, knowing that her son needed her presence, her maternal presence, and not just from afar. While there, you know, she made contact with the Bishop of Milan, St. Ambrose, a great bishop, and that was where St. Augustine was at the time too. And, and that holy bishop assured Monica that the son of so many tears, such burning tears, insistent tears to the Lord would never perish. No, her son would be saved because of her intercessory prayers and sacrifices. And indeed, that was the case. Not only did Augustine receive the grace of conversion through Monica, but also the grace of great holiness of life and becoming one of the greatest bishops and doctors of the church. This is particularly important you know, for all of us today. You know, the, the example of St. Monica in her persevering prayer for loved ones for their conversion not to pray for them for a little while or half-heartedly, but to persevere in prayer for them for if it requires many years or decades or even beyond one's whole life for our loved ones are indeed worth 
a whole lifetime of prayer and tears and sacrifices for the sake of their souls that they might enjoy eternal life. We at times are tempted to, to give up in our prayers for our loved ones. So St. Monaco is the example to follow, however. Never give up, never get discouraged, but to persevere. Our Lord always answers our prayers. At times, the answer is, you know, wait, keep going, persevere, keep growing in that trust and so much merit that you are accumulating because of your, your loving perseverance. So we ask St. Monica to, to help us intercede for us that we might in turn be faithful intercessors for others, beginning with our family members or loved ones, and perhaps all of us here today have loved ones who are far from God and are in need of our prayers. And so we need, to, we need to redouble our efforts and persevere. Our Lord assured St. Faustina that nothing pleases him so much as the prayer for the conversion of poor sinners. That's something we can do and give great joy to our Lord's heart and no doubt many graces to these poor sinners we pray for. Also to be mindful of is Our Lady of Fatima's words. Remember when she said, many souls go to hell because there's no one to pray and make sacrifices for them. And not that the eternal salvation depends only on the, the prayers and sacrifices of individuals, other people, and not to deny the individual responsibility of the person in question, their own free will. But the point is, you know, Our Lady wants to really remind us that we, we need to help others. Our Lord, in a sense, depends on our cooperation and distributing graces you know, to souls in great need. So we need to be mindful of that and let us persevere in praying for our loved ones. And our Lord will, we hope, he'll bring them to himself, give them the grace of conversion, and even more of great holiness and eternal life. Praise be Jesus and Mary.